Hi, Brentech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft has rolled out the optional bug fix updates for Windows 10 and Windows 11. And for Windows 11, as I posted earlier today, the update was KB5034848. And if you have this toggle turned on, you will also get the fifth wave of new features rolling out to Windows 11 22H2 and 23H2. And that will be KB5035349, which is this Windows configuration update. Now, I'll leave the bug fix update video, which also included three new features down below. But just uh, to do this as a separate video, because there's quite a lot going on with Moment 5. And this is now the fifth wave of new features that Microsoft has rolled out in total for Windows 11 when it comes to Moment updates. And this is the first and also the last moment update for windows 11 23 h2 because later on this year september october we are getting our windows 11 24 h2 annual feature update which will bump up that version as many of you may well know now just to go through a couple of the highlights now there's quite a lot going on with voice access uh, narrator and accessibility uh, with the moment five feature updates so i'm just going to get straight into this and first of all um, you can now use voice access with the following languages. French, that's France, Canada, German, Spanish, Spain, Mexico. And when you turn on voice access for the first time, Windows will ask you to download a speech model. So just take note of that. And there's something else to take note of. You can now use all voice access features on multiple displays. These include number and grid overlays that in the past you could only use on the primary display. So if we just quickly head over to an image that I have downloaded from the release notes, here we can see some interesting stuff when it comes to the grid overlay and I do apologize for the image quality. So over and above, I'm using voice access now on multiple displays while you are using the grid overlay on a screen, you can quickly switch to another display. And to do that, use the alphabet or NATO phonetic in your command. For example, B or Bravo or both valid are both valid for the display that is assigned that letter. And you can also use the mouse grid command to quickly move your mouse to a specific point on a display according to Microsoft and the release notes. And the update also introduces voice shortcuts or custom commands. You can use them, Microsoft says, to create your own commands in the supported English dialects to start say, what can I say? And click the voice shortcuts tab on the left panel. So quite a lot going on with voice access, which is an accessibility feature as mentioned. And then moving on to narrator, which is another accessibility feature. So for this one, we're going to head back to accessibility, and there we go. So um, the description says, Narrator is a screen reader that describes what's on your screen. And you can now listen to a preview of 10 natural voices before you download them. And once you download them, um, they work without an internet connection, which I think is a nice move as an accessibility feature if you are offline and don't have access to a internet connection. And then also for Narrator, it adds a new keyboard command to move between the images on a screen. Microsoft says now you can use the keys G, G or Shift and G to move forward or backward between images in scan mode. And it also improves Narrator's detection of text in images, which includes handwriting. It also improves the description of images. And uh, in Microsoft Word, Nar Narrator will announce the presence of bookmarks and draft or resolved comments. It also tells you if accessibility suggestions exist when it reads text in the file. And the last new improvement for Narrator, you can now use voice access to open shortcuts, dictate text, and interact with elements on the screen. So as mentioned, quite a lot going on with uh, Narrator and voice access. And uh, um, nice to see Microsoft focusing a little bit on the accessibility side with Moment 5. Now, also Windows Share, apparently um, the Windows Share window now supports sharing with WhatsApp uh, in, the sh in the Share Using section. So if you do not have WhatsApp installed, you can install it from the Windows Share window, which I think is a nice improvement. And then heading to Nearby Share, which for this we're going to head to the system page and Nearby Sharing. And um, Nearby Sharing enables you to share files, photos, and links with Nearby 
Windows devices. And for this, um, we get three improvements and new features rolling out for nearby share. So you can now uh, use quick settings or the settings app to turn on nearby share. So for that, quick settings, there we go. Uh, you can now turn on nearby share directly now from quick settings, which I think is great. And the update also improves nearby share transfer speed for users on the same network. So that's a bit of a performance boost. And uh, you can also give your device a more friendly name to identify it when sharing. So that's, as we can see, is on the system nearby sharing page. You can just rename your device by clicking on that toggle. And then moving on to casting. And basically, um, they say that the cast flyout menu in quick settings. So once again, the quick settings. And there we go. That's cast. The cast flyout menu in quick settings give you more help to find nearby displays, fixed connections, and more. So... Um, as you can see, um, if you can't get a connection or something, you got that link, you can click on that and that will give you a little bit more info um, and help you f and basically help you find nearby displays, which I also think is nice. And a step uh, forward. And then Snap Layouts. Um, some interesting stuff going on with Snap Layouts. And if we head to Snap Layouts, they say that this update adds suggestions to Snap Layouts they help you to instantly snap multiple app windows together. So what you can do now is you can now hover, as we can see, over the minimize or maximize button of an app to open the, lay the layout box. And when you do app icons, will display various layout options and you can use them to help you to choose the best layout options. And I don't really use um, snap layouts, but if you do, this may be a nice move where you've got those um, suggestions basically and layout options to help you choose the best layout with the apps that you have running and are open in that actual session. So that's more or less what's new in Moment 5. Compared to Moment 4, um, which was a major update, um, quite a lot less happening with um, Moment 5, and a lot of Moment 5 um, is focusing on accessibility, as mentioned. Now, there are also new features for Windows 365 Boot, and Windows 365 Switch, and that's the cloud PC of Microsoft, which is more focused at um, or at corporations and enterprises. But what I'm going to do at a later stage, I'm going to post a different video on the improvements that rolled out for 365 Boot and 365 Switch, if you would be interested. And I'll do a video at a later stage regarding that, if not today, possibly in the next day or two. And that's it. That's what's new with the Moment 5 feature update. And as mentioned... That's rolling out with this bug fix update, KB5034848. If you have um, this toggle turned on and it's rolled out as the configuration update, which is this update, KB5035349. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.